Ông quay cho. The president, please be seated. Le président, veuillez vous asseoir. The court is now back in session. L'audience est ouverte. We are now going to hear the testimony of T. C. E. Thirty-three. Court officer is now instructed to call in the uh, witness. Monsieur d'audience, veuillez appeler le témoin. The President. Good afternoon, Mr. Witness. What's your name, Bonjour, please? Monsieur le témoin. Quel est votre nom? Uh, my name is Steve Hedder. It's actually Stephen Hedder with a PH. Steve Hedder. En fait, je m'appelle Stephen. Écrit en PH. The President. Thank you, le Mr. Président. Steve Hedder. How old are Merci, you this monsieur year? Hedder. Quel âge avez-vous? 60, 60 years old this year. Réponse. J'ai 60 ans. The president. Thank you. Le président, merci. Mr. Steve Hedder, what do you do for a living? Monsieur Hedder, quelle est votre occupation? I'm a political scientist Réponse. and a political historian. Je suis historien et expert en études politiques. The President, thank you. Le Président. Mr. Steve Hedda, where do you live? Où habitez-vous? I have right of residence Réponse. in the United States and in the United Kingdom. And I live in those places and elsewhere. Et je vis dans ces pays-là et ailleurs également. The President, thank you. Le président. What nationality are you? Merci. Quelle est votre nationalité? Um, I'm an American citizen, U.S. passport. Je suis citoyen américain. Je porte un passeport américain. The president, thank you. Mr. Le Steve président, Heller, merci. could you please tell the chamber Monsieur your Heller. parents' names? My father's name was Robert Hedder, and my mother's maiden name was Patricia Mauer. The president, uh, what's your, has, uh, rather your spouse's name, and uh, how many children do you have? Quel est le nom de votre épouse? Combien d'enfants avez-vous? My wife's name is Marianne Lilliberg, and I have two daughters. The President, Le President, Mr. Steve Hedder, as the witness who will Monsieur be Hedder. giving testimony before the trial chamber, the chamber requires that uh, you take a oath based on your religious belief. Do you agree with this? À vos uh, yes. L'acceptez-vous? Réponse, oui. The President, now the International 
greffier of the trial chamber will administer the oath taking ceremony for Mr. Va procéder um, à la prestation de serment de M. Steven Hedder. Can we invite the greffier to please um, administer this uh, oath taking, please? Greffier. Mr. Hedder, could you please repeat after me? I announce the prestation of serment. My greffier, M. Hedder, veuillez respecter après moi. Je déclare solennellement de dire la vérité, toute la vérité et rien que la vérité. I solemnly declare I'll, I will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Speak the truth, tell the, uh, the truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. The President. Thank you, Mr. Steve Hedder. According to the report by the greffier of the trial chamber this morning, according to the best uh, recollection and your knowledge, you are not in a relationship with an accused or a civil party in case file 002, and that you are not uh, related to these uh, in the two accused uh, persons, Mr. Kilsampan and Nunchia. Uh, Is that true? Yes, that's, that's correct. The President, the President, next, uh, the Chamber would like uh, to notify you of your right under Rule 28, right against uh, self-incrimination of witnesses. This is the header as the witness. You may Monsieur object Hader, to making any témoin, statement that might tend to incriminate you. In other words, you have the right not to incriminate yourself. As the witness, du, uh, droit you shall give testimony before the chamber en tant que and that you shall respond to all questions put to, to you by the judges of the bench and parties to the proceedings, unless uh, you exercise your right uh, si not to respond to the questions that are self-incriminating. And as the witness, you shall speak the truth. The whole truth, nothing but the truth, and that your responses must be based on the experiences you have encountered. Mr. Steve Heather, have you ever given any interviews to any of the co investigators of the ECCC over the past years? No. Réponse. Non. Ma okun hai. The president. Uh, thank you. Le président. Merci. Mr. Steve Hedder. Now the chamber would like uh, to hand over to the co-prosecutors to begin putting la questions uh, to Mr. Steve Hedder before the other parties to the proceedings. Co-prosecutors and lead co-lawyers for the civil parties will have two days and a half for questioning time. Thank you, Mr. President. Your Honours, uh, may it please you. Good afternoon to the judges of this court. Good afternoon to my fellow counsel. And in particular, good afternoon to you, Dr. Hedder. Et bonjour, Dr. It's, Eder. It's good to see you here. Un plaisir de Many vous people ici. in this court have been waiting for some time Beaucoup for you to come. And you're a witness in these proceedings. Votre venue, vous êtes témoin I want to give you the comfort before we start that je tiens you're not an expert witness. Uh, dès le début, vous pas si I am not going to be asking you to express expert opinions. Vous de des I am going to be with, I hope, Mr. President's leave, avec, je covering de the books that you've authored, je vais les que vous avez écrit, covering the interviews you've had, with many people over the years and confining my questions in that way. Now, it has to be selective because if I was to undertake a detailed examination of everything you've written, we'd be here for two weeks. 
I'd like to start, please, by asking you some biographical questions, or if you can confirm parts that I'm putting to you. Now, is it right that you have a BA in Asian Studies and an MA in Government from Cornell University? Yes, that's, those, both of those points are correct. That certainly at some stage you have been a lecturer in political science at the University of London's School of Oriental and African Studies, which for the purposes of my examination I will be shortening to the words SOAS. Is that correct? Um, almost. Um, many British academic institutions don't believe that there is any such thing as political science, uh, which they consider a kind of American conceit. Um, so technically speaking, um, I was a lecturer not in political science but politics. And in uh, more recent times, I've been a research associate, not a lecturer. Um, at SOAS, which is what I, my current post at SOAS, not lecturer, but research associate. Is it correct that in the past you have worked as a special correspondent in China, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, and Taiwan for Time magazine? Newsweek pour les revues Time and NBC News, Newsweek and that you NBC covered News. the Cambodian conflict as a journalist between 1973 en en journalist and 1975. Yes, um, all of all of that's correct. Although it, oui, it should be said that. Exact. Um, my sort of extensive journalistic work was only in the in, in the 73-75 period. Is it also correct that at some stage, and please give me the years if it helps, that you served as the deputy director of the United Nations Transitional Authority in Cambodia? often referred de, to as UNTAC uh, in the Information Educational Division. Autrement dit, la PRONUC dans la um, division Yes, that's correct. Um, Although there was some concern within the UN system about the, 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 the naming of me as a deputy director, which had a specific UN meaning. So I think for part of that time, the um, title wasn't used, and I instead used the title of the head of the analysis and the assessment unit of the Information Education Division. Thank you. Is it also Question correct merci. that you have undertaken research on the Thai-Cambodian border and Phnom Penh from 1979 to 1983 as a fellow of the Institute of Asian Studies? of Chulalongkorn University. De yes, that's, uh, uh, it's correct in the, the sense that oui, uh, in exact. that period I did Dans research période, as a research fellow of the Asian Institute of Chulalongkorn University on the Khmer Rouge while they were in power, that is to say, with regard to the Khmer Rouge in the period that's the, within the temporal jurisdiction of the court. And is it also correct that you've undertaken uh, work as a fellow of the Research School of Pacific Studies 
of the Australian National University. Yes, that's, uh, I was in their Department of History. Uh, they didn't believe in political science either, so I was a, there I was a kind of political historian. And again, in that academic capacity, my research was on the Khmer Rouge uh, in the period that's uh, relevant to the temporal jurisdiction of the court. Is it also correct Question. that at uh, some stage, and tell me if it's still current, that you've been a consultant to the War Crimes Research Office at the American University? The President, uh, Mr. Heder, could you please hold on and counsel Kung Sung Hon? You may now proceed. Vous avez la parole. Council Kung Song Maître On. Kung Thank you, Sam Mr. On. President. Merci, Monsieur le Président. I have heard uh, that uh, the co-prosecutor were putting some leading questions regarding the witness uh, educational background. Par le we would like sur, just to know uh, the les, sources uh, of the or the basis uh, of uh, these questions. I mean, the resources uh, the co-prosecutor is now relying upon because Mr. Uh, Steve Heather already made it clear that he has never given any interviews to the co-investigating judges. And for that, uh, uh, we would like uh, to also have access to those uh, pieces of information. Otherwise, we will take issue with this line of questioning. I hope my learned friends knows about Google. J'espère que mon cher confrère est au courant de Google. That's the source of the biography. C'est la source. And it seems Google's pretty accurate. Et il semble Can I proceed? Google donne des informations précises. Vous me permettez de continuer? The president, yes, indeed, you may. Oui, allez-y. Mr. Heder, is it also right? Monsieur Heder. And again, give me the years, please, because these might not be correct off Google. Je vais vous demander de me donner des années si jamais Google s'était trompé. Sorry. Are there problems with your microphone? Y a-t-il des problèmes avec votre microphone? Mr. Heder, I've got another question, but were, were you about to add Monsieur something? Heder, je vais yeah. vous poser une autre question, mais vous alliez rajouter quelque chose. Allez-y. I'm not sure I answered your question about the specific years of working at UNTAC. That was 92, 93, although there was some preliminary work with UNTAC's predecessor, UNAMIC, which existed in, in 91. Thank you. And is it correct that you've also worked and please give me the years for this. Question. Merci. Est-il vrai que vous As avez également travaillé et vous investigateur, researcher, analyst, or something similar, within the office of the co-prosecutors for this court for a period, and then within the office of the co-investigating judges. Au bureau des co-juges d'instruction. Um, yes, that Réponse. may require oui. some. Clarification. Um, I was originally contracted by UNAKRT to work as an investigator, researcher, analyst, all one word, um, in the office of the co-investigating judges. And that was at a point in time uh, when um, the staffing pattern for the office of the co-prosecutors included no posts, zero posts for investigator researchers, investigators, researchers, or analysts. So although I was hired by UNA KRT to work for the office of the co-investigating judges, 
There was an agreement between Judge Lamond and Prosecutor Petit to lend me temporarily to the office of the co-investigator, uh, the office of the co-prosecutors. I was then taken back to the office of the co-investigating judges as a result of a subsequent agreement between Judge Lamond and Robert Petit. So technically speaking, I was always contracted to work for the office of the co-investigating judges, never contracted to work for the office of the co-prosecutors. But I indeed did work in the office of the co-prosecutors from the effectively the first day that the court existed through to the end, if I recall correctly, of 2006. I should maybe add here that I had previously worked for UNKRT before the existence of the court in the first several months of 2006 as a consultant to UNAKRT. Thank you. And can I, uh, there was an objection to my last question uh, a few questions ago. Can you confirm that you've been a consultant to the War Crimes Research Office at the American University? Yes, I think that was in 98 or 1999, and um, I, this may be an opportunity for me to say that that was the period in which I did the writing that led to the publication of seven candidates for prosecution. And the funding for that research came from the then Open Society Institute. So that's the, the relevance of that particular period of consultancy or research funding, um, two things that I've offered authored, which, if I understand correctly, are on the case file. Thank you. That leads in, I hope, appropriately to the next document. Mr. President, uh, I have prepared a document here which shows all the material authored by Mr. Heather, which is on the case file and which is on the prosecutor's Rule 80 list. Can I please show a document, perhaps I would suggest to Judge Cartwright, because I only have an English version, and then can I seek leave to distribute other copies of this document to the court, unless there's another way that you feel is more appropriate. The President, uh, you, you may proceed indeed. The President, d'accord, allez-y. I wonder if I might explain the document very briefly to Judge Cartwright and then ask for the President's leave for it to be distributed. It shows, in short, the books uh, written by Mr. Hedder, a selection of statements taken by him when he was working at SOAS, a selection of statements taken by him at, when he was at DC CAM, and I'll ask a question about that. The interviews he had with Q Sampong, the interviews he had with Ying Sari, the interviews he had with refugees on the Thai-Cambodian border in 1980, interviews he conducted from the office of the co-investigation judges, and other interviews. My intention, Judge Cartwright, is this should help the judges to understand, to help Mr. Hedder understand, and to help all my learned friends also have a reference document. Can I please ask whether I can have permission to circulate now um, copies of this document? I'm afraid it's only available in English. 
Um, I haven't had it uh, translated into Khmer or French. Judge uh, Silver Cartwright, you may proceed, please. Uh, yes, um, thank you, President. Just a, a supplementary question, uh, please, uh, Mr. Prosecutor. Um, this is a list prepared by the prosecutor's office, of course. Um, have you listed these documents on the daily interface? And secondly, are they available in at least two and preferably three languages? The first question, yes, they have been downloaded onto the interface. And the second question, there are versions in two languages, at least, but with some documents, only partial translations were done in French and Khmer. So I obviously can't promise you that every page is available in French and Khmer, but with most of them it is. All, all interviews, for instance, are in uh, all three languages. The, um, most of the statements are in all three languages. The one that isn't available in all three languages is Cambodian Communism, which is one of the books, but generally speaking, available in two or three languages. Le Président, je vous en prie. Right, please. Madame Thank you, President. And one further question. Merci. Um, Encore une question. Uh, certainly from our own um, examination of many of the documents uh, attributed to Dr. Hedda, we have noted that documents Hedder, have not been completely translated into Khmer. Uh, but our concern is if you, Mr. Prosecutor, intend to refer to parts that are not translated, and if so, whether you have made a request for those to be translated at least into Khmer. Um, Judge Carr, can I say I haven't made the request? Can I explain why? I've obviously been preparing 
for Pourquoi? Dr. Hedda heavily over the last few days, and the section on Ces particularly jours, Cambodian communism is one that was only settled yesterday or even this morning. Can I suggest this, that certainly um, both David Chandler and Philip Short testified in circumstances where their books were not available in all languages, uh, and Judge Cartwright, as I have done with, for instance, document presentations where this has arisen, I've put in the requests for the translation immediately after the, um, the presentation. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, President. Well, uh, the La Chamber uh, will allow you to proceed on the basis that um, it may rule against you on occasion um, uh, and on the basis that you will seek those translations. Uh, but in the meantime, just to make it very clear, I'm not the only one who can read and understand English, so could you perhaps give the entire trial chamber uh, copies of this uh, index? Thank you. I certainly can, and providing one to you wasn't meant to be an insult to everyone else, but I thought it might help with the management of matters. So I've got, I think, 16 copies here. I wonder if they could be distributed, and also to my learned friends, the legal lawyers for the civil parties. The President, a uh, court Monsieur officer is now instructed to obtain the hard copy document from the prosecutor and uh, circulate it to the parties to the proceedings. Mr. President, can I also ask that Dr. Heder has a copy, please? Je demanderai que l'on remette un exemplaire également à Monsieur Heder. Yes, um, you may proceed. Dr. Hedda, I can see that you're familiarizing yourself with the document. What I'd like to do is to use this document for verification purposes, first of all. So if we look at the first page, page one of the document, we see at item 1A, books and reports by you. It's not exhaustive, as I'd said, but can you confirm that you are the author or co-author of the books itemized at 1 to 5 on that page? Um, well, for five, Four and three, I know exactly what they refer to, um, and one as well. One, uh, I mean, so you, do, you haven't given a, f you haven't given a full academic citation. So, um, 
it's sometimes a little bit hard for me to recognize these things for what they probably are. And I think one, three, four, and five are all published works in the academic sense of the term. I think two, if I'm not mistaken, um, is unpublished in the academic sense of the term and was something that was used as the basis or as a kind of draft that led to the item number three, which was published in an academic sense. So I, I, I think that covers the, those five items. I'm just uh, going to read them into the record. Number one, document number E3-3169 is a report by Stephen Hedder entitled Pol Pot and Q Sampon in its shortened form. Document 3 is E3-48. That is a book by Stephen Hedder and Brian Tittemore entitled Seven Candidates for Prosecution, Accountability for the Crimes of the Khmer Rouge. Document 4 has a D number of E190.1.398, and that again was a report by Stephen Hedder entitled, quote, Reassessing the Role of Senior Leaders and Local Officials in Democratic Cambodia Crimes, Cambodian Accountability in Comparative Perspective, close quote, and document or book Number five on the list is E3-22, which is a book by Stephen Hedder entitled Cambodian Communism and the Vietnamese Model, Imitation and Independence, 1930-1975. to Dr. Hedder, can we move to the next category? Oh, sorry. Uh, can, I, I can see you want to add something. I'm not entirely sure about item four um, because there was a conference paper um, and then there was a publication and the conference paper was much longer and more elaborate than the publication. The publication was taken or summarized from the conference paper and without actually seeing the document itself, si I can't be sh absolutely pas, sure absolument which certain. of the two it is. I think this is the, sorry, I think this is the publication version, not the conference paper version, but I would have to see the document in order to be absolutely sure. That's fair, and I'm about to show you. Uh, Mr. President, can I please show Dr. Hedder a copy of the document that is on our case file? in order to Monsieur verify, Heder, please, that this is the published work. The President, Le President, you may proceed. Vous y êtes autorisé. Can I hand please to Dr. Hedder, document number on our file E190.1.398. Le document E190.1.398, tel qu'il figure dans notre dossier. The President, Mr. Prosecutor, please hold on. Uh, Counsel Coupe, uh, you may now proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Merci. Um, I'm going to make an objection. Um, Je vais former une objection to the terminology used by the prosecutor in relation. respect of this witness. Now, Par à ce on, its, on its face, it might seem a very childish ah, objection that I'm going to make. But I think it's uh, uh, a matter of uh, importance and principle behind it. Mr. Stephen Hedder is here Monsieur as a witness. Est ici comme he was témoin. called upon to appear as an expert. 
he didn't want to be an expert. Comme expert. Il ne pas For whatever reason, that will be a, a topic of my questioning. Ça, but now he's here as a witness, so I would prefer that my learned friend on the other side témoin. addresses uh, Mr. Heder as Mr. Heder, Mr. Mr. Heder witness, comme tel. but not Monsieur continuously Heder, as Dr. Heder. Le témoin, um, mais non pas Dr. Like I said, comme on il the face of it, that might be a challenge of objection, but it isn't. He is only in one capacity, and that is as a witness. No court of law is a normal witness addressed with a second academic aucun tribunal, so, on ne désigne I would invite my learned friend on the other side du monde to address the witness as Mr. Witness or as Mr. Heder. Monsieur le témoin ou Monsieur Heder. Uh, I do think it's childish, Mr. Je pense effectivement que c'est puéril, Monsieur le Président. Um, I once appeared in a court martial when I was a captain in the British Army, and I was never referred to by my rank. Lorsque j'étais capitaine en Grande-Bretagne, on m'a jamais appelé par mon grade, et on a décrit cela comme une erreur. Stephen Heder is a doctor. Stephen Heder. That's his academic Doctor. qualification. Il de ses if he were a brigadier, we'd call him brigadier. brigadier on if brigadier. he had another title, we'd si call him that. Un autre titre, he, in my respectful rion. submission, is entirely avis, entitled to be described as a doctor because that's what docteur, it says on the tin and that's what he is. Et la réalité. It is not a big uh, issue. Le I think, uh, ce there pas was an objection. Problème, mais une objection était uh, the chamber wishes to advise uh, the prosecutor to address him Monsieur as a witness, and uh, that will uh, have uh, smoothen the uh, proceedings and the process as a whole. So, uh, Mr. Prosecutor, you may proceed. Je vous en prie. Mr. Witness. Can you have a look at this document, Monsieur which is, I'm passing, going to ask the President, I think he's already given permission, E190.1.398, is this the published version of reassessing the role? Le Président a déjà donné son accord. Est-ce que c'est la version publiée du document intitulé Reassessing the Role? Yes, that's the published version. It's a chapter in an edited volume. Can I take that back just for the moment? I just wanted you to verify it. Permettez-moi de reprendre ce document. Je voulais simplement que vous le vérifiez. Staying on the document index, if we call this document the document index. At item B on page matières, 1, we have a heading of School of African and Oriental Studies, B, and then listed from item 6 on that list through six, to item 57 inclusive are a series of statements that suggest that you conducted these statements with these witnesses uh, on the dates concerned. First of all, can I ask you, were you in Cambodia with SOAS or under SOAS in 2005 on these dates? Yes. Réponse, oui. As far as you're able in the brief time you've had to look at these, can you Question, confirm taking these de statements? Ceci, mais -vous avoir ces um, well, the, the dates are familiar and on a first glance, 
certainly many of the many of the names are familiar. I frankly don't recognize all of the names immediately, but there's a certain rather peculiar way in which the names are transliterated, uh, which suggests to me that I'm the one who did the transliterating and therefore the interviewing. Was there anyone else from SOAS conducting this many interviews in 2005? Um, this may require some explanation of how it is that academic research is um, done, uh, and particularly how it's um, for, um, funded. Uh, this research was all funded which, with money that came from the then Open Society Institute. Uh, I'll add immediately that that's not to be confused with the Open Society Justice Initiative, which is a completely different organization. Um, and the way in which this normally works in academic institutions is that a funding, a funding, a funding organization um, provides money to your academic employer in order to release you from some of your other academic duties, most notably teaching. Um, and if you are released from teaching, then you are free to go outside of the school, the, the classroom, and do research in the field. Um, the university normally takes a cut off the top of that funding, but you remain on your university salary. The money doesn't go directly into your pocket. Um, in this instance, there was additional money which was paid to the university, that is to say, SOAS, um, and which was then paid by the university to, to other people who worked with me in the conduct of these interviews, who were therefore in effect paid by SOAS. Um, that didn't make them SOAS employees, so I'm not quite sure how to directly answer your question, but that's the way the, the, the system worked. And so, can you remember how long you were in Cambodia in 2005 conducting interviews on behalf of SOAS? Um, my recollection is that it was a longer period than is reflected here, but I think, um, well, may maybe not. I think what happened was in the earlier part of 2005, um, there was other research done with the same funding that didn't involve uh, interviewing but involved looking at documents. So although the overall research grant covered most, if not all, of the calendar year of 2005, uh, the interviewing was done in the latter half of the year, uh, whereas the documentary work was done in the first half of the year. So I think I was in Cambodia for almost the whole of the year, but the interviewing was done in the second half. Now, did you lead this project, or did somebody else lead it? 
Uh, I, I think it would be fair to say I led it, yes. I'd like to turn now to page four of the index, and at the top of page four we have DC CAM. The statements here cover quite a broad range because we move from 1990 with a statement of Uk Bunchun through to September 2005 with a statement of Ruh Soy. Now, can you briefly explain, firstly, what your contact with DC CAM has been during this period? Quels ont été vos contacts avec le DC CAM durant cette période? Pourriez-vous l'expliquer brièvement? Um, I find this a, the, the, this some of this I think is a, is a bit confused or confusing. Um, the arrangement that I had with DC CAM, which I think was mostly in 2004, um, Avec le DC -CAM, was done in a manner similar to the one I just described. Cela a uh, there un was peu, comme je viens de lire, money which originated with DC CAM and in fact also money which originated with the British Embassy in Phnom Penh, which was, as in the other arrangement, paid to my university to buy out my teaching, um, to free me up to do other, to, to do research work in lieu of doing teaching. Um, and that project consisted primarily of looking at interviews that were done not by me, but by DC CAM, which I then summarized in English um, and compiled into a series of such summaries. There are a couple of items on here, uh, and some, some, some of that tied it over, I think, into early 2005, which would explain some of the, some of the dates here. And I, I think I may have done s a few more of these summaries while I was also doing the, 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 the 2005 work. Um, there are some things here that uh, don't fit uh, with that. Um, explanation. There's the, for example, there's item 65, E3 stroke 387, alternative number D2, D210 stroke 5. Um, that's not an interview that I did in, in any association with DC CAM. That's actually an interview I did when I was at the Australian National University, the transcript of which I provided to DC CAM, and it therefore seems to somehow have become gone into your system, into the case file, uh, as a DC CAM document. Um, I also am a bit perplexed by item 59, Le dated 1999. The name doesn't immediately ring a bell with me, um, and I wonder whether that's possibly the date of DC CAM's interview uh, and not the, the date on which I, I did it. And some of these other dates, in fact, are the dates I think of the interview, the interview as done by DC CAM, not the date on which I summarized it, which would explain why for example, in the case of item 64, um, the interview date is given as 2000, but I did the summary in 2005. Uh, one might misunderstand from this document that I did the interview or I did the summary in 2000. In fact, that's not the case. Thank you. When we get to a particular interview, I hope I'll be having Mr. President to show you the interview, and I'm sure we can sort things out there. Moving to the next item, or Mr. President, I see the time is just after four o'clock.
Oui, je crois yes, que uh, les I interprètes uh, souhaiteraient that, uh, que lorsque M. Like Eder s'exprime, il puisse prendre un peu de recul par rapport au micro, uh, parce que Heder parle a trop près du micro, il y a des coupures qui rendent difficile so l'interprétation. Voilà, donc si peut so prendre for the un peu de distance, ça so facilitera le travail de l'interprète. Merci. Merci. And uh, we thank you, Mr. Header and the co-prosecutor, since it is now appropriate Merci, uh, moment already for today's adjournment. The chamber will adjourn. Nous the next session will be resumed by tomorrow at 9 a.m. And during tomorrow's sessions, the chamber continue to hear the testimony of demain, Mr. Steve Header. Questions continue to be Mr. put Steve by the co-prosecutors. Les co-procureurs pourront continuer à lui poser des questions. Mr. Hedder, Monsieur your Hedder, testimony has not yet uh, been complete and that uh, the chamber will hear you tomorrow as well. So please uh, come again to give the testimony for ici, tomorrow's sessions, the session that commences um, de demain, at 9 a.m. in the morning. Court officer is now directed to assist with the vessel unit to make Les sure that Mr. Heather is properly assisted during this adjournment and have him return to the courtroom by 9 a.m. Security personnel are now directed to bring Mr. Kyosong Khan and Nguyen Chia back to the detention facility and have them return to the courtroom by tomorrow night a.m. Mr. Nguyen Chia is directed to be brought to his holding cell only where he can help observe the proceedings from there through audio-visual the court is adjourned.